Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you a very cool creation of mine called the Bunker Bike. This is something that I made using parts from trashed items, restore items, auto salvage yard parts, as well as a few parts purchased online. Total cost to make this project was under $70. Though others online tried making similar versions of what you see here, based on what I saw, my design and power output ability far exceeds the other versions shown. This setup allows you to charge 6 volt or 12 volt lead acid batteries, power 12 volt or 24 volt DC electronics, or operate 120 volt universal motor appliances and tools, which you'll see a demonstration for in this video. This setup ensures you'll never be without power in the event solar or wind power cannot be used. And it's also ideal for those of you with underground shelters or bunkers. You get to exercise and produce power at the same time. Okay, let's take a closer look at how this was made. Okay, the stand that you're looking at right here is a bike training stand. If you don't want to ride your bicycle, if it's raining outside, or you just want to have a stationary bike to get exercise, that's what this stand was made for. The rear wheel goes against this roller right here. And where you can see there's now a pulley there used to be this flywheel, very heavy, with steel plates, so I had to remove that and install the pulley that you see right there, as well as install another pulley on the treadmill motor. Now over here you can see the treadmill had a belt that went around here, but that was no good. So when I found the pulley here, as well as the pulley there, at the auto salvage yard, I drilled out the center of this pulley, slid it over the hub, and welded it just like you see in this video. The stand normally goes for around $125, brand new. I found it at my local restore for only $10. It was an absolute steal, and when I saw it, I knew it was perfect for this project. Now, the treadmill motor is rated at 21 amps, 95 volts DC, and with the pulley ratio that you see right here with the bicycle's tire, it puts out around 50 to 55 volts DC. Let me swing the camera around to this side and show you a few more things. Over here you can see how I connected the shaft of that roller with the rear wheel to this pulley. It's a nut placed backwards because inside this pulley are splines and the head of that nut actually locked into those splines really good. I put some spacers behind this pulley, use Loctite Blue, and it does not slip at all. It's perfect. The belt is a four rib belt to match the two four rib pulleys. You're going to notice we eliminated the flywheel. We didn't need it because the treadmill motor has a very large cast iron flywheel. The purpose of that flywheel is to smooth out variations in speed of that motor when it's under load. Now I had to bolt the treadmill motor to the stand and make sure it was very secure. The treadmill motor did have two bolt holes in it, but I didn't want to bolt it directly to the frame because number one, the holes were too far apart to bolt it to the frame, but I also didn't want to have the motor rocking back and forth, especially when there's tension on the belt. The motor's going to want to have the tendency to pull over and downward, and I didn't want to have that happen. So I found a 3 inch by 3 inch anchor bolt plate at Home Depot, 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. I drilled two holes for the bolts so I could bolt the plate to the motor, but before I did that, I wanted to have something to prevent the motor from rocking downward. So what I did is I welded on a steel rod onto that plate which contours to the motor so the motor cannot roll downward. And you can see it right here in this video clip. I then took the 316th inch steel plate, positioned it exactly where I wanted it, 
and I welded it on the top as well as on the bottom of that steel plate. And right here is a closer look at that steel plate where it's welded on the top. Now the next thing that was very important was the polarity of the motor because I had to make sure that when the wheel is in this rack and it's rotating in the right direction that positive is positive and negative is negative. So what happened over here, it's going to be hard to see but I'll give you a close up in a minute, it says plus and over here it says minus. So this red wire used to be here and the black wire, the negative, used to be on this side. Luckily these clips pop off and you can take the whole wire with the brush holder, switch it around to this side and I put this one on the other side. So now it says plus with the negative, negative with the red which is the positive and as I'm rotating the wheel in the correct direction I'll always have positive in the right place. So you want to make sure the polarity is correct. Let me move the camera down a little lower and I'll show you everything I did over here. And right here you can get a better look at the positive and the negative with the two brushes. The way this is set up with the pulley ratio, the treadmill motor will output right around 50 to 55 volts DC when using a higher gear on the bicycle. And that particular voltage is not too useful for me. So what I needed to do was have a way to take the 55 volts DC and step it up to as high as 120 volts DC. What this board right here will do, it will take that 55 volt DC output and it will boost it as high as 120 volts DC. This is called a boost converter or a step up converter. The efficiency of the board is good. It's probably 85 to 88 percent efficient which is very similar to a power transformer and the other board located over here is going to take the 55 volts and allow me to step that voltage all the way down if desired. So I can have a 5 volt output for USB charging, a 13.8 to 14.5 volt output for charging lead acid batteries. I could even set it for 29 volts to charge 24 volt lead acid battery systems. This one here handles up to 15 amp output. I think it's rated 10 to 12 amp continuous, 15 intermittent, and the efficiency is probably 92 to 94 percent for that converter. So as a result of having the step up and step down boards, I have a wide range of power outputs available on this unit. If you're interested in this digital step up board or the step down circuit, I'll place a link in the video description area to make it easier for you to find those boards. Right now the way you see this set up, I have a regulated 13.8 volts, goes to this accessory socket which can be connected to a power inverter if I desire to create 120 volts AC as opposed to the 120 volt DC output off of this board. I can also take these clamps, connect it to a lead acid battery, set the proper charging voltage and it will regulate that voltage and I'll be able to charge the battery fairly quickly. On this circuit here is a little opening and there's a screw on a potentiometer rotating it counterclockwise or clockwise will change the voltage higher or lower. Accessory socket I'll also place a link for if you're looking for this one with the bracket fairly inexpensive around five bucks and that handles up to 15 amps. Now the benefit of having this board able to go up to 120 I'll set it around 110 volts DC output and it will allow me to operate many universal motors. I can operate many power tools, vacuum cleaners, kitchen appliances, all with this board right here. If I like to use sensitive electronics that need 120 volts AC, I would then use the power inverter in this socket. Over here this cable is polarized and it's connected to the output on this board. Let me get a little closer, looking directly at this to show you a few things. The buttons on this board, the first one is the set button, this one is the down button, the next one is the up button, and the last one is the OK button. Over here is a green LED, it says constant voltage, the yellow one is constant current, and the one in the bottom says voltage output. If you'd like to set the voltage, you're going to have to put the bicycle on a very low gear, rotate the pedal by hand. When you do, you'll see the display power up and you're going to look at either the voltage it's currently set at or the current setting. If it's on the voltage, you can select it by pushing the first button once 
and then once you select it, you can raise that voltage to whatever you want or lower it to a level which is lower but still above the 55 volts of the treadmill motor. Once you're done setting it, push the set button once. You can do the same thing with setting the maximum current output by choosing the current setting, pushing the button once, adjusting it up or down, and then setting it. Now once you start pedaling, it's going to show you the regulated voltage output, but in order to get it to become active, this button needs to be pressed, which is the OK button. That sets the constant voltage output. Instead of me leaning down, way down here, I connected wires in parallel with that push button, and it goes to this red wire, and I have this button right over here. All right, push that button once, and that triggers the entire circuit from right underneath your seat. In this short video clip right here, you can see how easy it is for me to mount the bicycle onto the stand. Thirteen seven nine eight point five M. All right, let me rotate the pedal by hand on the low gear, and I'll show you how this display works. All right, you can see it's set for one ten. So what I want to do is I want to go lower, just select, that's the current setting, push it again, and I can go lower if I want. Of course, you got to keep it higher than the input voltage, so I wouldn't go any lower than 55. If you want to go higher, push the other button. It's 120, I'm going to keep it at 110, and I'm going to hit set. Set again, that's 5 amp set, and I want constant voltage, I push that. Now it's going to give you the 110 volt output. Okay, the first 120 volt appliance, we're going to be operating it at 110 volts, and you can see the current rating, 3.5 amps. Keep an eye on the display for 110 volts, that will indicate maximum speed for the jigsaw. Here we go. definitely get your exercise getting that thing to run at full speed. Now let's take a look at a 2.6 amp hedge trimmer. Okay, let's power up this hedge trimmer. Keep an eye on the display for 110 volts. Here we go. see I had no problem powering that. Now let's try something else. Okay, we're going to try the angle grinder. This one is a Harbor Freight Special and it says 120 at 5 amps. Let's give it a try. Keep your eye on the display. Let's just say it wasn't easy, but I was able to do it. Let's try one more. Okay, let's try out the vacuum cleaner. Here we go. Keep an eye on the display. And that is it.
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.